Uh, in my opinion, it'd probably be easier for Honda just to scrap it and go with Garmin because Garmin knows what the hell they're doing when it comes to GPS for motorcycles. Good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man. Just getting ready to... Ah, there it is. Fire up the Goldwing. Go for a short ride. I've got a couple of errands to run this morning. Man, I tell you what, I hope you guys are having as beautiful weather as we're having. We had a uh, cold front move in in the last couple of days and what a relief because we've had a very hot summer as many of you know I've told you in the past got to shut my trunk so this morning it is about 75 degrees out just perfect no wind this morning clear skies not a cloud in the sky this is the perfect morning for a ride. What's the weather like in your area? This is a day where I wish now I had planned a day trip somewhere because uh, it kind of shocked me, it surprised me. I didn't know we were going to get this nice of weather. But I think our high today is going to be 90. And I think our low overnight is going to be in the low 70s. So, just really incredible weather. Well, I have some pretty exciting news for Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. For those of you who are subscribers and regulars to the channel. Last Sunday, we topped 25,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. That's pretty exciting. So this is an opportunity for me to thank all of you for your support. And you know, I, I don't like to look at this as a Honda Goldwing channel. I prefer to look at it as more of a, just a motorsports and motorcycle uh, oriented channel because just because I ride a Goldwing doesn't mean uh, that Anybody who rides any brand motorcycle isn't welcome to join in and share. We all have a lot in common, so I'm not a brand bigot in any way. Everybody has to ride the bike that they love and that they feel comfortable on and that they can get the most enjoyment out of, so that's just kind of my philosophy. I did something kind of stupid the other day. I was going to I was going to be doing a motor vlog and I was moving my microphone and my whole uh, GoPro rig from one helmet to another helmet because I was going to be using a different headset for some testing. And as I was uh, putting the microphone under my uh, chin bar, I had to tape down the wire. And when I went to cut the tape, <laughs> I accidentally cut the wire to the microphone. Can you believe that? That's the Purple Panda microphone, lavalier mic that I've talked about in the past. It's part of my GoPro setup. And uh, the only place I know to get those is on Amazon. And I ordered one about 7 o'clock in the morning. And I think I went and had breakfast with Don Smith. And by the time I got home, can you believe it, that microphone was sitting on my front porch probably by about 9.30 in the morning. Just completely blew me away uh, this guy's not going now that brings up another question I'll just touch on real quick I've noticed lately and when I say lately in the last couple of years and it seems to be getting even worse that when I get behind somebody at a stoplight I have to tap my horn they're not paying attention they're texting they're doing something I assume they're texting because the light will turn green and I'll sit there and I'll count three seconds before I touch my horn. But people sometimes don't like it when you honk your horn at them 
and you're at somewhat of a disadvantage if you're on a motorcycle because let's face it all they would have to do is throw their car or their truck in this in in the case of texas their pickup truck into reverse and slam into you and don't think they won't do it here so when i'm in my car i just tap the horn lightly most people are okay with it they know they're not paying attention but have you experienced this when you're riding or when you're driving that when you get behind people uh, you have to honk at them to get them to go through the green light because they're texting and they're not paying attention so anyway thanks to all of you that have subscribed in the past I appreciate uh, reaching that goal of 25,000 subscribers many of you know that's been a goal of mine for a long time and uh, I was pretty excited when uh, I got the notification from YouTube that we had exceeded 25,000 subscribers. Now many of you may have already seen my video where I talk about the navigation update, the July 2020 navigation update from Honda for the 2018 to 2020 Goldwing. And I should have mentioned in that video that the link I provided and what I'm referring to is for the U.S. models of Goldwing. The link I provided you may not work if you're in a different country because they have different tools, different uh, versions different maps for the navigation system so you have to make sure and I don't exactly know how to tell you to find the navigation update for your particular country I just had the one for the US model because I've had some people say hey I've tried to install this five times and it doesn't read it it doesn't work I've tried new uh, USB thumb drives and come to find out maybe it's somebody in Belgium or somebody in uh, Brazil and I suspect it's because the uh, link that I provided is specifically for U.S. models. And this update, as many of you already know, does include support for Android Auto. And if you're looking at my uh, screen right now as I'm writing, you'll notice I am not using Android Auto at the moment. Uh, my first impressions... Uh, I have never used Apple CarPlay, so I wasn't aware of how the system really works until I got the Android Auto set up. But honestly, my first impression, and I will do a deeper dive into Android Auto in a future video. But my first impression is it's a little clunky, and I don't like the fact that you have to have the phone plugged into the bike. I'm not used to plugging my phone into the bike because I'll get off my bike and go in somewhere and I don't want to have to worry about the phone being in the glove box. Not to mention the potential overheating issues with having the phone in the glove box. And for those of you with an airbag model, your phone would be in the trunk. But honestly, uh, the biggest problem I have with Android Auto is that you, you pretty much have to have your Bluetooth headset turned on before before the bike is turned on because it looks for a Bluetooth headset and if it does not find it it will not launch Android Auto. The problem I have with that is most of my headsets whether it be a Cardo or a Sina don't reliably connect to the motorcycle unless they're turned on after the bike is turned on. So what I end up doing is turning on the headset, starting up the bike, and it doesn't connect to Android Auto because the bike has not made the connection to the Bluetooth headset. The Bluetooth headset does not connect to the bike unless the bike is running when I turn on the headset. So it's a little bit clunky. Sometimes you can go into Bluetooth settings and reconnect the headset and that works and then Android Auto will come up. But there has to be some kind of event before uh, the Apple, I mean the uh, Honda nav system looks for a Bluetooth headset and then will engage Android Auto. So tell me what your experience has been with that. I, I have trouble getting my Bluetooth headsets to connect unless they're the last one in the chain. 
And so what I found myself having to do is pull over, turn off the bike, turn the bike back on, restart, and, it, and then sometimes it reconnects and then Android Auto comes up. And you know, honestly, the apps that I have available through Android Auto is just not worth the hassle. So I will do more testing with it, especially when I do a road trip. I'll make sure to connect to Android Auto and see you know, what my feelings are. I did take a look at some of the new features of the, of the navigation system. And honestly, I was expecting a lot more out of the navigation update than what we got. I see the part where you can uh, change the background color of the map. Uh, to me, that's very minimal. In fact, I looked at all the different colors and I can't really tell much difference in the colors except for khaki. Uh, does look a little bit different, but the yellow and the white and some of the other backgrounds, to me, they all kind of look alike. They, they're just not that distinctive. Tell me what you think. What, you know, what, is your, what are your feelings on these new background map colors? I was expecting a completely different graphic interface for the maps. Now they do say that they've added the uh, estimated time of arrival, but I thought we already had that. Am I wrong about that? I thought ETA already showed up on the screen, in the navigation screen. I don't know. Maybe I just imagined it. And of course, the last uh, thing, probably the most major difference that I've noticed is that you can now see the speed limit of the road you're riding on when you're riding on a road that is, you know, anything other than a small residential road, it should show you the speed limit. And that's a nice feature. It would have been nicer if they would have changed the color of the speed limit sign if you were exceeding the speed limit. That would have been a nice little visual reminder. The system knows, the GPS knows how fast you're going. So it, all the other GPSs, even Google Maps or Waze, they will visually inform you if you're exceeding the speed limit. And I think it would have been a nice thing for Honda to include. Now, while I haven't personally tested it yet, I did talk to Don the other day. He said he tried out the, the routing with the waypoints, and if you pass a waypoint, uh, it continues to remind you to go back to that waypoint. So if you skip a stop or skip a fuel stop or something like that, and that you still have to go through many clumsy, cumbersome steps to delete that waypoint so that you no longer have to uh, endure that reminder. And I thought they would have solved that issue. I thought they would have had a screen pop up that said, do you want to skip this waypoint? You hit the uh, enter or ENT button on your left hand grip and you go on about your route. I don't know why that is so difficult for Honda to implement or whoever is doing the software for the GPS. Again, I'll say it again. My guess is that this GPS was designed for use in an automobile, not a motorcycle. And people in automobiles don't generally create custom routes with waypoints. They just look, <clears throat> they're just looking for the, uh, you know, the closest Chinese restaurant and take me there and take me there the fastest way you can get me there. So using this GPS as a touring motorcyclist to me is not still not very functional. There's still not an easy way to get routes into the Goldwing. Uh, to me it should be you should be able to do it wirelessly with Bluetooth. You shouldn't even have to put it on the USB drive. You should be able to you've got your if the route's on your phone or if the route is on your laptop, you should be able to connect to your Goldwing through Bluetooth or through Wi-Fi and just download those routes wirelessly. And what I understand now is that you, most people are using this Rever website to create their routes, but you've got to pay for that. There's a subscription fee, I, I, and that bothers me because I'm used to using Basecamp with my Garmin where it's free. I have this beautiful uh, 
PC based system where I can create routes and save them to a USB drive and put them on the bike but this navigation system will not read a base camp route properly so anyway there's still a lot of work to be done on the navigation system uh, in my opinion it'd probably be easier for Honda just to scrap it and go with Garmin because Garmin knows what the hell they're doing when it comes to GPS for motorcycles and the company that Honda partnered with on this doesn't they just simply don't they don't like I say it's an automotive GPS it's not designed for a motorcycle you know really what it should have is you should have voice commands you should be able to say uh, hey Goldwing uh, run route number three or hey Goldwing skip waypoint I mean you should have voice commands you shouldn't have to take your eyes and your hands off the road and off the hand grips to fiddle around with a navigation system on a motorcycle that would have given the Honda GPS a functionality that even Garmin doesn't have right now. And how hard could it be? We have voice control on our cell phones. We have voice control on just about everything now. So anyway, that's my uh, motor vlog for today. I hope you found it interesting. Please put your comments down below love reading your comments tell me what your thoughts are on the new navigation update tell me what your thoughts are on the new map colors and I'd love to know your thoughts on Android Auto if you're an Android user also check out my latest video where I put the Cena plus mesh to the test for those of you that have a non mesh device for example, a Bluetooth communicator from Cena, you can now take advantage of Mesh 2.0 and Open Mesh with this device called a Plus Mesh. So check out my latest review video on the Plus Mesh, where Don and I put it to the test. And I want to thank you again for joining me. I'll see you the next time on Cruise Man's Motor Vlogs. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.